Welcome to the fifth episode of my Last of Us review series. My name is Dan Bennett. You are here on the Real Dan Bennett YouTube channel. If you've been following along with me in the show, you know that we covered the first four episodes last week. So I tried to be a little bit more concise this week. Uh, I'm going to break it down a little bit more uh, outside of just the plot. But uh, let's jump right in. This episode starts off with a flashback. And this is ten days essentially prior to where last episode took place. Kathleen and her people taking over Kansas City. And Fedra obviously has been painted as this fascist regime that took over the country when Outbreak Day took place. The one caveat with that is that in this episode, we get to see the other side of the coin a little bit. You see Kathleen and her people basically performing similar atrocities to what we're led to believe Fedra was doing to the people. There's executions, there's hangings. At one point, Kathleen has all of the collaborators who are basically the equivalent to people who were ratting out Jewish people to the Nazis in World War II, but it, within the context of this story, has them rounded up in a jail cell and is interrogating them under the threat of death. She is looking for the whereabouts of Henry. One of the people breaks down and confesses that he knows that Dr. Edelstein, who we saw at the top of last episode, is collaborating with Henry and Sam. But we're seeing these little tidbits of Kathleen, now that she's in power, sort of being corrupted in the absolute power corrupts absolutely type of way, where she's abusing these people in a very similar manner to what Fedra was doing, but to get to her means. We see Henry and Sam meet up with Dr. Edelstein, and we get to draw some parallels between their relationship and the Joel and Ellie relationship that we've seen. Sam is eight years old at the time of this, and he's deaf, which is a, a, it's a small variation from the game, um, but it puts a little bit more strain on Henry and a little bit more reliance on Henry for him to survive within the new world. Henry and Sam, after meeting up with Edelstein, hunker down with their rations, which again, we saw this hidden room that they had been staying in. This is the room. And they hunker down in there for about 10 days. And after that 10 days and Edelstein becoming deceased, they decide that it's time to look into where to go next. Henry sees the shootout that Joel and Ellie got into when they first got into town. And in this moment, he goes, these people are now also enemies of Kathleen and, and company. So they might be good partners for us to link up with in order to fight our way out. They then track Joel and Ellie to the room that they end up staying in at the end of the last episode. And that's when the holdup happens where uh, Sam is holding Joel at gunpoint, Henry holding Ellie. And he essentially pushes them at th under threat of violence into a partnership of necessity. So against Joel's better judgment, they, they agree to partner up. Joel and Henry are having a conversation about what the game plan is. How are we gonna do this? We're gonna go through some tunnels. But what this drafts out in this scene is also more of those parallels between Henry and Sam and Joel and Ellie. Henry and Sam kinda represent the partnership and the relationship and the dependency that Joel and Ellie need to skew more toward if they're gonna make it through to the end of the line. But they're also sort of a cautionary tale. They head out toward the tunnels that Henry knows about, that he learned about during his collaborator days, and they find what's essentially an underground compound or community that existed at one point but has since been abandoned. And we get to see a lot of elements from the game. You've got the wall decorations, the paint, you've got a soccer goal drawn up on the wall, and reference to a character named Ish that we get to learn more about through notes and things in the game. But here we just sort of see a I image on the wall and it's more Easter egg in this context. But they camp out for a little while and you get to see Ellie and Sam sort of developing their relationship. Putting on this sort of playful, caretakery type of relationship, which puts her in a little bit more of like a sibling-esque role, which 
is not something obviously she's used to and it lets us see yet another side of Ellie where she's still childish she's still um playful but she has this uh genuine empathy for other people even though she's kind of got this rough around the edges defense mechanism that she busts out Joel realizes that Henry was likely functioning as a collaborator in an attempt to protect his brother Sam and he says hey even though in my history in my experience collaborators are the enemy I guess I can't be too judgmental so he's opening up his mind a little bit and now things are becoming a little bit less black and white for Joel. Henry confesses the reality of the situation and that is that he ratted out Kathleen's brother to Fedra in order to get drugs to treat leukemia that Sam had come down with. It's another glimpse into the life or death situations that you have to face, the moral dilemmas that you have to face in these, this world. And it draws attention to the fact that Henry sort of ranked his brother above Kathleen's brother. It was a, an eye for an eye, basically. So it's a very loaded situation that they're dealing with. When they were talking about the tunnels, Henry alluded to the fact that he may need Joel's help because there could be infected down here because they've been buried underground uh, courtesy of Fedra a couple years ago. However, we don't see any at this stage. So our, our heroes basically move pretty freely. In the meantime, we transition over. We see Kathleen and she's presumably in her childhood bedroom where she reminisces to Perry about her brother. Perry says, look, your brother was an amazing guy, which reiterates what Henry tells Joel. But the fact of the matter is he couldn't do what needed to be done. He didn't get things going. You did. And you got us free. So we're, we're with you. It's an interesting dynamic to see that despite the fact that her motivations are flawed, these people who have also had a moral breakdown are cool with it. We meet back up with Joel and Ellie and Henry and Sam. It's nighttime now and they are under cover of darkness, headed down through this neighborhood. Henry's drive, driving traffic and they're bantering a little bit, probably a little too relaxed given the reality of the situation that they're that they're in as they head toward the bridge to safety. Ellie nominates Henry and Sam to come along with them to Wyoming and Joel tries to put, put the kibosh to that and we see her express sort of a daughter-esque uh, relationship with him where she says, Nah, he's always like this. He'll say no, and then I'll pester him, and then he'll break down. And in that moment, all of a sudden, a rifle shoots, and we are in what game fans will know as the Sniper Street, basically. Henry and Sam are not used to this sort of thing, because they panic, and they start to run away, and the Sniper shoots again, and they take their cover. Meanwhile, Joel can post. He's, he's in this fight-or-flight mindset all the time. Joel sneaks around to the house. He goes upstairs. He finds an old man uh, with the rifle out in the window. Says, put it down. The old man tries to turn and shoot him. And Joel finishes this guy off. Kathleen and all her forces are, are on their way there in trucks and a plow and all of this. And so Joel's yelling out the window for them to run and they can't really hear him until it's basically too late. They start taking off running toward the house and Joel's trying with the rifle to pick off the driver of the plow that's getting closer and closer and closer to running Ellie down. And at the last minute, he gets them and they crash into a house. Big explosion from the truck. All of Kathleen's people roll up and she basically calls him out, says, Henry, get out here. He is about to surrender to spare Ellie and Sam for them to run away. Kathleen takes out her gun and she she's monologued just incessantly in this moment saying, you know what you did. I understand why you did what you did. However, this is what fate has brought us. As she's about to shoot him, the truck sinks into the ground. 
we were hinted at this sinkhole problem in the last episode down in the storage room, and now we get to see what the real problem is and hear the uh, the gargling of what's in, assumed to be the infected. And everybody's sort of hanging on bated breath, and then out of this hole burst dozens and dozens of infected and they're just plowing through Kathleen and her people and then out of the hole the bloater he's gigantic he's bulbous he's super strong he's picking guys up and just slamming them Perry tries to shoo Kathleen away and he, he takes aim and he empties his gun and the bloater runs up on him and we get this, we get a true to game death animation basically as the bloater just rips him rips him apart at the mouth sam and ellie and henry are tr they're trying to kind of take cover during this and ellie jumps in a car and this creepy little child clicker climbs in and ellie gets out and she goes and, and she saves sam and henry who are trapped under her car as they're running away kathleen catches up to them and she's holding them at gunpoint and we see the little child clicker show back up and she jumps at her like a spider monkey and just starts to tear her into her and that's the end of Kathleen now too but our heroes uh Joel exits the house and our heroes ship out and the infected seemingly take over Kansas City again at its core this show isn't this story isn't a zombie show the infected are set pieces in a story about love, loss, and trauma. But they definitely, uh, they definitely gave us our fair share of infected in this episode. But I think that they executed this scene uh, in an extremely entertaining way. The action of it was stellar. The choreography of it, stellar. I hope that we get to see more of that down the line. I, I wasn't expecting us to get all the way to this point in this episode, but you know what? I enjoyed it. We take up at the hotel and there's another conversation between Joel and Henry where Joel finally says, look, you guys are welcome to come along to Wyoming with us. We're going to be walking, but you're welcome to come along. And Henry says, yeah, that'd be great. Ellie and Sam are conversing courtesy of his little drawing pad. And he's asking Ellie questions about fear and, and the world that they're in. And then he says, the people who turn into monsters, are they still themselves inside? And Ellie, who is clever, realizes that something's up. And Sam shows that he was, in fact, um, bitten. Ellie doesn't fully understand how her immunity works, but in her attempt at being optimistic and putting this kid, her temporary little brother, <laughs> at ease, she writes, my blood is uh, medicine. And she cuts her hand open and tries to put some of her blood on the wound, hoping that it's, it's something in her hemoglobin or her plasma that causes the uh, fungus to die says will you stay awake with me she says yes and in the morning we see she's fallen asleep in a chair she gets up he's sitting staring out a window and she walks over and she puts a hand on him but he's turned and so he attacks her she goes falling back into the other room and joel and henry both wake up and there's a gun sitting on the floor kind of between them and it's a race to who can get it first and henry scoops it up and he's holding the gun on Joel. And you're like, oh man, there's the imminent danger to Ellie. But the conflict within him of that being his brother. He holds Joel at gunpoint, turns the gun towards Sam, holds, gun, holds the gun at Joel. And then finally he turns and he shoots Sam. As the adrenaline of the moment wears off. And it seeps in what he just had to do. You can just, you can see the pain on his face as he starts to sort of ramble what did i just do and joel tries to reach for the gun because he knows the sensitive nature of this mental state but it's too late henry turns the gun on himself 
it was sad because you got to see these people. And I think the additional depth that was given to Henry and Sam courtesy of the Kathleen story also makes you care about them on a greater level. Joel and Allie take the two brothers and bury them. Ellie takes Sam's little drawing pad and she writes something on it and leaves it on his grave and says which way is west and she starts walking I, I i don't know if this was necessarily necessarily the intention but she was sort of getting a, a miniature family and friends something that she hadn't had before and she expresses to sam that she's afraid of ending up alone and so this was another step toward not ending up alone and now we're back to square one for joel this is also a wake-up call because they're a cautionary tale for them in that you need to find something to care about. The problem with the attachment is what it can do to you if you lose it. There's a lot of foreshadowing in this episode toward the overarching story, and I think it was beautifully done. And while the emotions are different than something like episode three, we did ride a little bit of an emotional roller coaster in this episode too. And we see that Ellie wrote, I'm sorry on the pad and then left that on Sam's grave because she wanted to help him. She wanted to save him and she couldn't. And Joel looks at that and he knows where she is currently at emotionally. And he has to then face the reality of, well, what just happened with them, that could happen to me now because he's sort of taken up this similar not symbiotic relationship per se, but the same relationship that these brothers had with Ellie. And I think that we keep progressing that better and better every week. It's going to make the journey for both of them more precarious and it's going to raise the stakes and it's going to make it more exciting to watch. This is another ex another excellent episode of the show. I'm wildly impressed <laughs> in the showrunner's execution of this. Obviously, they're working with amazing source material in the first place because the story of The Last of Us, part one, and even part two, which I've been replaying lately, um, they're very well-developed stories. As long as we kind of maintain that... I'm optimistic for the rest of this season, and I can't wait for some of the other key story points that we are going to cross, but great job again, guys. But I'm going to wrap this one up. Uh, let me know how, what you thought about episode five. How, were you excited to see the, the bloater wreaking havoc? How would you handle the situation with uh, Sam if, it, if you were in Henry's shoes? My name is Dan Bennett. This is the Real Dan Bennett YouTube channel. Give me a like and subscribe on this video if you wouldn't mind, uh, and follow along on the rest of the series as the season continues. Thanks for joining me for this fifth episode, and I hope to see you next week. Bye.